Tomorrow I am having rhinoplasty surgery and septoplasty surgery. How do I transition into the next scene where I'm gonna have bandages all over my face? Dan, quick, punch me. Basically, <laughs> I feel okay. You don't look okay. Excuse me. The right nostril is bigger than the left, so I hope that this is just swelling. I hope that they haven't, you know, like stuffed up or something and accidentally sent me home with this one smaller nostril than the other. I don't know if there's something wrong, I don't know if this is supposed to be happening or what, but particularly my left nostril, it's actually worse than it was when I had the stent in. I still can't really breathe. My left nostril has been completely blocked this whole time. Okay. I don't believe <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> like I did mention, I can't breathe through my left nostril properly and I can breathe through my right nostril. So I'm guessing the left side is just a bit more swollen. That's probably it. But speaking of breathing, look at this. And then I'm just saying to myself over and over again, no, it's just swelling. But what if it's not just swelling? What if my nose is crooked now? Hey guys, so it is Friday, March the 20th now, and um, side note, the world has changed a lot. It's really weird to think back to the day that I had my operation, which was a month and 13 days since my operation, and so much has changed. And it feels really selfish, and it doesn't feel right that I'm filming this video where I'm talking about my nose. For the sake of finishing the video and, and documenting my experience, I'm gonna continue on with it. But I just wanna say I hope everyone is staying safe. I hope my subscribers are well. I hope your family and your friends are well. This video, I wasn't intending on publishing this video until April because I wanted to give myself a full two months so that I could show you what my nose looked like after one month and then after two months. Now I'm not quite so sure. Obviously, whatever date that this ends up being published, the world is gonna be a very, very different place, I'm sure. So. As of today, uh, Australia has closed its borders to, uh, to anyone coming in, no one can leave. When I do my next update about my nose, I'm sure things will be very, very different in the world by that point, considering how much they've changed in the last two weeks. But anyway, update as far as the nose goes. So uh, on the 17th, which was Tuesday, I had an appointment with my doctor. He put a camera on the inside of my nose and he told me it looks perfect. He said, it's all healed inside. I've been complaining about this the whole time since the operation, but it's actually getting worse. And that's my left nostril. I can breathe perfectly through my right nostril. I cannot breathe through my left nostril. Like just a little bit, if I just block my right one. Well, hey, at least, at least the nostril doesn't pinch shut like it used to, but can you hear that noise? That's like what used to happen before the operation. If I block the left side, there's no sound. So when I went for my um, one month follow up, I said to the doctor, I'm really concerned about my left nostril. So when he put the camera in there, he's like, it looks perfect, but I can see that it's smaller. And he's like, that is kind of concerning. I'll just show you close up the tape. So the doctor told me I don't need to tape it anymore. He told me to tape it for one month to help reduce the swelling. And he said, you don't need to tape it anymore. But uh, I slept for one night without the tape on and woke up and my nose was so big, like, so big. So I don't think it really hurts to keep taping it. So I've been taping it. It's excruciatingly painful to peel this tape off because obviously you're so sensitive there. It really, really hurts to peel it off. Ow. Archie's still interested in the nose. He hasn't quite come to terms with mother's new beak and mother hasn't come to terms with her new beak either. You know, I went into the doctor's visit and he was like, so how are you feeling? And I was like, oh yeah, you know, it's a very swollen at the front. And he said, let me have a feel. And he started touching my nose and he's like, hmm, there is a bit of swelling there and there that may or may not go down. And I was like, sorry, may or may not. And he was like, yeah, you know, the, the shape of the nose will continue changing, but also you need to be massaging it every day. And he said, because it, it can possibly form and stay like that. For a start, I'm still having this issue where it looks like it's curving this way. Here is a lump. And also up here is a lump. 
and if I kind of press it, that kind of straightens it up a little bit. He said to me, 20 to 30 times a day, I need to be doing this. I was doing it three times a day before because that's what he told me. He was like, three times a day, you need to massage your nose. Then when I went in for the follow-up appointment and he saw these lumps, he was like, you need to do it 20 to 30 times a day because it could stay like that. You need to basically massage the lumps away or otherwise the nose could just shape itself like that. I was expecting that he would have some confidence and when I went in for the follow-up, he would be like, now your nose is still very swollen, don't worry, that'll come down. But his exact wording was, hmm, you're quite swollen more so than I thought you would be. I really hope that comes down for you. I was like, you you hope? You're not gonna tell me like, oh, that's going to come down? You're, you're gonna say that you hope it comes down? I hope it comes down too, sir. <laughs> anyway, like I said, this all feels very trivial to be talking about given the state of the world at the moment. Uh, I'll catch up with you guys again in two weeks and I'm really nervous to see what happens, not with me, with the world. Hey guys, so it's now the 4th of April and uh, I have had a, I've had a, a time <laughs> since I last spoke to you. So it's been two weeks since my last update. The world has gone mad. There's now one million cases of coronavirus, over 50,000 deaths. Australia is on lockdown, like total lockdown, or not total lockdown, but you should basically only go out for groceries and medical assistance and not very much else. Just wanna say it feels very strange talking about my operation and everything when there's so much else going on in the world but you know i want to see this video through and in a couple of days it'll be two months since my operation and by this point i was really hoping that things would be a lot better nose wise but they're not i will show you some pictures so basically after i spoke to you within a couple of days of that last clip my nose started to get bigger and bigger and bigger and you know last time I was complaining that it was looking a bit uneven and then it just got so much worse here's a here's a comparison photo for you so the image on the right was immediately after the operation and you can see that it was nice and straight the image on the left was when I was talking to you guys uh, in that last clip and you can see that it's lost all of its shape like it was really straight and it looked beautiful and now you can see that it's it's kind of like lumpy. Then when I turned my face to the side, this is what it looked like. So the nose on the right was the nose at the three, I think that was the three week mark, like three weeks uh, after the cast came off, my nose looked like that from the side. The left image is what my nose looked like exactly one week ago. Very sad for me to see and really concerning. I know that a lot of people are gonna be like, I, I'm not seeing what you're talking about, it looks fine. But to me, I can see it very, very clearly where it kind of like dips down and then it kind of comes out like that. So I was really concerned and I emailed my doctor and I wanted to see him, but uh, because of the lockdown laws in Australia, any non-essential medical things, uh, doctors can't see you. So my doctor said, that is concerning. You're coming on two months now post-op and it shouldn't be like that. He said, yes, there should be swelling. It's ex you know expected to be swelling, but the swelling should be going down. It shouldn't be getting Bigger. He said, uh, unfortunately, I can't see you. Normally, he would ask the patient to come in. He would see them. He would poke at it and maybe even give a steroid injection. So apparently you can put steroid injections where the swelling and the scar tissue is forming because it could be swelling, but it could also be scar tissue developing and that's gonna stay like that permanently. Swelling will subside, but scar tissue won't. So what they do is they put a steroid injection and that uh, removes the scar tissue. And he said, I can't see you and I don't think I'm gonna be able to see you for months. So he was like, look, there's nothing we can do. <laughs> he said, it's concerning. I hope that it goes back to the way that it was, but you know, if it takes six months before I can see you again, before all the lockdown things are, are lifted and everything, then, you know, we'll reassess when I see you. And he said, if it's still like that, then we'll either have to consider reoperating or just the steroid injections or something. So. It's been a whirlwind for me, but also with the pandemic going on, it's kind of like there's so much else happening in the world that I don't want to be moping about the shape of my nose. <laughs> because there's nothing I can do, I'm going to try and not focus on it. So I haven't actually looked at my nose side on uh, for the past week. I've made a couple of changes. So the doctor suggested maybe stop massaging it because he was telling me 20 to 30 times a day I was supposed to squeeze and apply pressure and all that sort of thing. He was like, maybe stop doing that. There's a lot of stitching in here apparently. So potentially from doing the massaging, some of these stitches that are holding everything together on the inside, maybe they haven't dissolved. And maybe by pressing it, I'm irritating it. I'm not massaging it anywhere near as much. I've gone back to taping it every single day. He said to me, 
uh, be really careful when you remove the tape. So you guys might remember last time I spoke to you, I had the tape on and I pulled it off. He was like, you need to make sure it's 100% wet and really moist because as you peel the tape off, what could be happening is it could be kind of like creating little tears on the inside. So he's like, make sure that there's no resistance when you pull off the tape. So I've been having to soak it either in the shower or soaking it with um, alcohol. So I actually get some vodka, I'll show you in a sec. Third change, stopped wearing glasses. And the other thing is I'm also like sleeping upright now. I'm using that pillow again because I'd gone back to sleeping more flat so I'm using a pillow now propping myself up so with those changes I'm hoping that the you know like in this image how you can see it curves and then it kind of goes like that I'm hoping that that has subsided a little bit so I'm gonna go get the vodka and everything and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna remove this tape if I sort of dip my finger in and then I can just rub it all over the tape the vodka basically dissolves the glue straight away coming off like a dream. Turning my head this way, I can see there's a lump here. If I press that, it's really squishy. Looking this way, I can see that there's still the downward turn. Looking this way was a little bit better. When I run my finger down this side of the nose, I also have a lump here that never used to be there, like a really big lump. And there's like a lump here and a lump here that I never used to have before either. If Next month it looks a little bit better, and then the month after that it looks a little bit better. It's easier to be like, now every month it's going to start to look better and better and better. But as it gets worse, it's so hard to imagine that it's ever going to get better. <laughs> so anyway, I'll see you guys in a month's time. Hey guys, so it's the 7th of June now, so um, didn't do a May update, mostly because there was no difference at all between April and May. Uh, my nose actually got a little bit worse. Uh, I mean, I have a couple of pictures of what my nose looked like in May. There was definitely still a lot of swelling around the tip there. I got in touch with my surgeon again and uh, sent him some update photos still. And I was like, it's still really swollen up here. Sent it to my surgeon and they were like, yeah, you're only at like three months. Of course, it's still swollen. And uh, they basically were telling me, you really need to wait a full five months before you can sort of get an idea of what it's going to start looking like. And then even from that point, it's meant to be like a full 12 months or even 14 months before you have the actual nose. So um, last month, I didn't even care much about the nose, to be honest. There's so much else happening in the world. It's just very wrong, you know, to go posting something like this at a time like this. So uh, anyway, let me give you the update for June. The nose is finally, finally from the front starting to lose those little bumps that I, I had around here. There is still a lump here and there's still a lump here, but it's nowhere near as bad. But I'll tell you the worst part about it. The absolute worst thing is the smell. There's no way to explain. <laughs> the only way that I can explain it to you, if you've ever had a piercing, of any sort anywhere on your body you might know what the piercing smell is you know like um if you get your ears pierced and they're pierced for a little while and then you take out the earring and it's a little bit gooey because it's healing a little bit pussy and then you take out the earring and it smells really bad there's just this bacteria smell. That smell, the dead skin or bacteria smell, whatever it is, if you've had a piercing, you know the repulsive smell that I'm talking about. It smells like that permanently in my nose. It started a couple of weeks ago. It's truly, truly vile, and there is no escape from it either. The smell only started when the lumps started to disappear. So I haven't contacted the doctor out of concern because I kind of feel like I noticed that the lumps were starting to subside, but then that's when the smell started happening. And what I would do, I was like massaging my nose. And when I massaged it, the smell would get more intense and like white liquid would come out of my nose. Sorry, I know that's way too much information, but I have a feeling it's probably just part of the healing process because it's all just, it's like everything that was, all the fluid and gunk that was kind of held up in there. I think my body is finally releasing it and letting it go. Anyway, it, it was truly horrifying the first time that I started to notice the smell. Aside from that, there's not really very much pain anymore, aside from when Daniel goes to give me a kiss and he forgets that I've had a nose job and he just goes bonk. I still can't move my top lip. It used to be much worse. My top lip was really stiff. It slowly started to regain a little bit of movement. You might like roll your top lip into your mouth, like I can't even do it. It's just really annoying. I mean, it means that I go out a lot with coffee mustaches. <laughs> Aside from that, it's still really crusty inside and occasionally little bumps form. I actually have a picture where you can see this lump and then it went away after a couple of days and then it came back. And I don't know if it's something to do with the internal stitching or what, but there is like crustiness just where my fingers are here. There's like little crusty bits that just 
won't go away. And I've tried to clean them out with cotton buds, but they just won't go. So I don't know if that's just it's scabs and scars and things like that. And obviously that's there's a lot of work done here because I had the turbinate bones removed or whatever he did to them, reduced them, I don't know. There's a lot kind of going on just here. The shape is slowly starting to come back. It's actually just been in the last week that the terrible shape that it was the last two months had started to go away. I'm starting to get a bit of definition back here. I'll try and give you guys a view from the side. Oh, am, I too, am I so pale? I'm blending in with the wall. If I turn, does my nose disappear? Just here, when I touch here, there is a huge lump. It is so big. It feels like if you, if you took the shape of, and size of my finger and put it under my skin, that's what this lump feels like. It's like there's a finger under my skin. It's very hard to, but I know it uh, It can't be like a permanent thing because it just popped up out of nowhere. So hopefully it'll just go away too. But it's very strange that it's firm, like it's not squishy. So I don't actually know what it is. I would say it goes from there to there and it's like that wide. And my left nostril. Last month, my, <laughs> my left nostril was so bad I actually couldn't breathe out of it. And that's what prompted me to email my doctor. I was like, help me, you know, I came to you for improved breathing and now I can't breathe out my left nostril. And they were like, relax, relax, it'll go away. I think my biggest fear is that like two years down the track, I'm gonna be like, excuse me, doctor, I can't breathe. And they'll be like, relax, it'll go away. But it never does. And they just keep telling me it'll go away. That's my biggest fear. <laughs> He's hoping that the next time I update you guys, I can breathe perfectly through my left nostril as well as I can breathe through my right nostril. So um, anyway, with that, that is the four month update. I will see you guys at the five month update. Well guys, um, <laughs> today is Wednesday the 24th of June and um, I just got back from an appointment with my doctor and um, as you may be able to see, things are looking a little bit, a little bit different. So what you're looking at right now is my nose after having a steroid injection. Basically, I went for this follow-up appointment and I walked in and he was like, that's, um, your nose is looking a bit, a bit fat. He was like, it should not look like that. And I was like, I'm guessing it probably shouldn't smell like this either. And he was like, smell like what? And I was like, it smells like, you know, if you leave a Band-Aid on for like a month and then you peel the Band-Aid off and it's wet inside and it smells, like bacteria, like it smells like that all the time and it's leaking like a clear juice and it's stinky. And he was like, you are going straight on antibiotics. So he prescribed me with antibiotics. I have to take them morning and night for a week. And then uh, upon the end of the week, if it's not any better, I have to renew the script and then do it for another week. Um, he said, if the smell goes away after the first week, I don't need to stay on them. And then he was like, now, aside from the smell, which implies that maybe there's some sort of infection or something going on inside, he said it shouldn't look that big. Around the second month when I emailed him about it, he said he wasn't concerned. And then when I emailed, I think it was in the third month, he was like, hmm, give it a bit more time, but that doesn't sound right. And then he said, to, because of Corona, I wasn't able to actually see him. I couldn't go to uh, see the doctor in person. And he was like, it's difficult just looking at the pictures, not being able to put the camera up the nose and all that. And he said, um, you know, as soon as I can accept patients again, I'll have you come in. So that was that was today. Uh, you know, it's, it's at the end of June now. So um, he was finally able to see me. He put uh, some numbing spray in, put a camera up my nose. He was like, it's healing fine visibly. But the fact that it is so immensely fat and swollen, it should not be like that. And he was kind of explaining to me something about the healing process, about how there's these gaps and they fill with fluid and then the fluid drains away and they fill with fluid again, depending on what you're doing. And he's like, by this point, those gaps should have sealed. No more fluid should be pooling. And he said, but the fact that there's all of this fluid in this section here implies that maybe it's not healing properly. So then he said, we can put in a steroid injection. And he said, now people with thin skin, so I'm a thin skinned person and he said people with thin skin like me he doesn't normally like to do steroid injections because he said it can be so powerful and so strong that it can deflate the skin and he said imagine if you have like a piece of meat and you put plastic over it and then you vacuum seal it and it kind of like shrinks like shrink wrap if you put steroid injections into someone with thin skin it can shrink the area so much that it looks really tight and taut and almost like bony he said he was 
a bit hesitant, but he was like, your nose is not healing. It's not healing right. So I think we do need to do the steroid injections. He's like, maybe in 12 months time, it'll finally start to settle. We can either do the steroid injection with the risk that maybe it might shrink a little bit too far and you could have like a bony looking nose or you can have the lumps for the next 12 months or more. And then at the end of the 12 months, if it still hasn't gone away, we would need to do the steroid injection anyway. And I was sitting there and I was like, do you have any pictures of like steroid injections gone wrong? Like, have you got photos of someone that had the steroid injections done and their nose looks bony? He's like, I don't have any pictures because it's never happened to any of my patients. And he's like, it's just something that I have seen. It basically like it kills the tissue that's there. So normally you need a bit of tissue padding the, the skin and then tissue and then bone. And he's like, it, it basically kills the tissue and then it's just like skin on bone. And I was like, so if you do it and it goes badly, how do you fix that? And he's like, that would then be another operation and probably having to put a graft or like a cartilage graft. And I just sat there and I was like, what do I do? Like I could say no to the steroid injection, but he literally said to me, a couple of months ago before Corona, well, right when Corona happened and he wasn't allowed to see me. He's like, normally I, you know, if seeing as your nose is looking like this in pictures, I'd be getting you in and giving you a steroid injection right now, but you can't come see me because of Corona. So my thought process was, well, he was going to give me the steroid injection. If, if it weren't for Corona, like two months ago, I would have had the steroid injection. It still hasn't naturally gone away. And he's like, if it hasn't gone away by this point, it probably isn't gonna go away or even like it might take 12 months or more. So he was like, I'll, I'll give you the injection, but I'll give you a very small amount. So he put 0.4 mil of the injection in my nose and that's what my nose looks like. Like see how it, <laughs> it's ridiculous, especially from the side. Um, so he said, it's gonna be fat and inflamed like this for a day and then the steroid will absorb. And then he said, it'll be six weeks. And then he wants me to go back in six weeks. So that ends up being the 5th of August. Hey guys, so it is uh, July 21st now, it's a Tuesday. So I was supposed to go back and see my doctor on August 6th. And then on Friday, just the other day, this random little lump appeared just on this side of my nose. I'll put up a picture. It's kind of, it's a little bit harder to see if you're not looking closely. I don't know. I guess you, yeah, you, you can kind of see it. See right here. See how it goes down and then there's a bump. I took a picture of it and I emailed it to my surgeon on Friday and he was like, can you come see me this afternoon? And I said, no, I can't, I'm working. So I organized to go see him today and um, he felt it and he said, oh, okay, I was worried it could have been like a piece of sort of slipped cartilage or something that's out of place. But after feeling it, he said, it actually feels like it's a, there's a certain type of stitch. Apparently they put these stitches along here that take nine months to dissolve. So he said it feels more like that. And he thinks that when he put the steroid injection in there and some of the swelling came down, that revealed that lump. So he thinks that this lump isn't new. He thinks that it was probably under the swelling. And now that the swelling's reduced, the lump is visible. He has now, as of today, put me back on antibiotics. So he gave me the steroid injection before and put me on antibiotics for a week, told me to keep an eye on it, which I did. I did the antibiotics for a week. The smell went away, but then two days off the antibiotics and the smell came back again. So uh, I went back on for another week and now I've been off them for like a week and a half. But when I saw him today, he said, we got the results back from the, oh, don't wipe your messy beak on me, mister. They got the results back from the swab that they did when I was last there. Turns out I have a staph infection. He thinks that I developed a staph infection when we were in the COVID shutdown. So that would have been um, March, April. And then I wasn't able to see him for a couple of months. And then he thinks that the staph infection got worse and worse and worse during that time. If the COVID shutdown hadn't happened and if he'd been able to see me, he would have been able to give me antibiotics and an injection back then and I would have been okay. But apparently because the staph infection was left so long unchecked, it's spread into my sinuses. I was getting really bad headaches. And then when I went on the antibiotics, the smell went away and the headaches went away. Where we're at right now is he said, you just kind of have to wait now. I don't have to go back and see him until the 2nd of September. He wants me to go on these antibiotics for two weeks. He wants me to just keep waiting because he said that the steroid injection takes like six weeks to fully work. It's been four weeks since he gave it to me. Uh, and it definitely has taken a lot of the swelling down. My friends are noticing, you know, I had some friends over the other day and they were like, oh my God, your nose looks so different. It, it really does. I didn't think that it would change that much, but it is a lot smaller here. 
Um, when he, when the doctor was feeling it today, he was like, there's still a huge amount of swelling here. Um, the shape is not even, you know, there's little lumps and bumps and everything, but he said, I just have to keep waiting. That's it for now. I don't know when I'm gonna film the next update. I might do it in like, um, well, it's the 21st now, so I'll probably try and post this um, in August. Well guys, it's um, August 18th now, and uh, it hasn't, been such a good time since the last update. So I was on really hardcore antibiotics for a couple of weeks and um, the nose shape, I mean, it, it goes up and down and up and down and like it, it ends up with bumps on it and then they go away and then the next day the bumps come back and then they go away. And I mean, the thing about the shape, like it takes 12 months after this sort of operation for the shape to actually properly form. So I can't really make any final decisions on whether I like the shape or not. One thing that I do know for certain after the six month point, which, which is now, it has officially been over six months since my operation, my breathing is worse now than it was before the operation. I really can't believe that it hasn't got better by this point. You know, ever since the start, I've been saying I can't breathe through my left nostril and I've been thinking it would go away and I've been patiently, patiently waiting for it to go away. It hasn't gone away. Listen to this. If I block my left nostril, listen to me breathing through my right. Good, nice, functioning like a nose. Listen to the left. Not good. If I block it and start breathing, and then if I put a little bit of tension here, watch the difference. So anyway, today, uh, in one hour, I'm going to see my surgeon again. As I've mentioned to you in the past, when I've gone and told him I can't breathe through my left nostril, he's put the camera up and he said, I can't see any problem. There's no problem. So I took a picture and I put it on a website called Real Self. It's a website where verified doctors can come and, um, you know, respond to people's questions. And so far after posting my picture and saying, it's been six months, I can't breathe. There's been two doctors responding saying, looks like you need a revision operation. Anyway, today I'm gonna to be seeing my surgeon and saying to him, I'm fairly sure I need a revision. In fact, I'm going to insist I need a revision because up to this point, uh, how, can, how can I go for an operation to fix my breathing and then fix the shape and then come out with everything worse? You know, like uh, the breathing is 10 times worse. The shape from the front, I mean, it's it's, not so great at the moment. I mean, I guess the shape from the side is fine, but like from the front, I don't even know whether that's ever gonna change from this point or not. I, everything is, it's, it's getting really, really hard and really draining by this point. And I'm honestly looking back and thinking, I wish I'd never done anything. Yes, my breathing was bad before, but it was nowhere near as bad as this. And I mean, I can't afford to pay for another operation. So if he's not willing to do the revision surgery to fix the breathing, I'm just gonna have to live with this. Like it's been six months so far and I can't breathe. It's really, really stressful. And um, I mean, also obviously the shape thing, that's kind of upsetting me too. Like have a look, you can see before and after from the front. I mean, I need to give that one time, but I'm not feeling so good about the way that it looks from the front. And I'm just distraught about the breathing. When I say distraught, I mean like quite literally distraught. I actually woke up in the middle of the night uh, last week not being able to breathe. I was going to vlog, you know, and say like, guys, I'm having a really hard time and I couldn't even get the words out. I just like, I just sat there just sobbing. I was so upset to think I paid so much money and I went through such a major operation and I've come out and I can't breathe at all through my left nostril and the likelihood is I will probably have to have a second operation to fix it. And it was so hard for me to summon up the courage to even have one operation. And now I'm, you know, haunted by the thought that I'll probably have to have a second one. And I was just like, just crying and crying and crying. So anyway, I will go to the doctor now, 
see what he says and I will report back afterwards and um, let you know. All right guys, I'm back from the doctor and it's not the best news. Uh, I have to have a second operation. It's really upsetting. It took me years to summon up the courage to have the first operation. It took me years and years and years. And I had really hoped it would just be a one and done kind of thing. You know, I hoped that they would take me in, fix my breathing, give me a nice shape, it'd be done. But you know, nothing in life is so easy. He listened to me, you know, doing the blocking the nose and the wheezing breathing and all that sort of thing. And he said, okay, you have a collapsed external nasal valve. Apparently, so, you know, my breathing problems before were caused by the very weak cartilage that I had. So they put, you know, grafts in here to strengthen the nasal uh, walls. So that way when I breathed in, it didn't suck together. But in strengthening that, now the inside skin is loose and floppy because apparently I'm just a jiggly floppy person all over my entire body and you know even my nostrils can't be tight. I have skin in here that now when I breathe in even though the outside is nice and taut and doesn't pinch in, the inside is pinching in. So that's why when I do this you don't see it collapsing from externally, but on the inside, the skin is pinching together. So he said what he has to do is give me another septoplasty. So it's not a it's not a revision rhinoplasty surgery, it's revision septoplasty. So my health insurance is covering it. I don't have to pay him anything. He's doing it all for free, which is great because I was thinking like, oh my God, like I used all my life savings to pay for this first operation and like I can't afford a second one. I'm booked in for October the 6th for the second operation. So he's going to give me a septoplasty, left side septoplasty. He's going to shave the septum on the left side to widen it. It should be done in such a way that then when I breathe in, even if the skin is floppy and pinches together, it should still leave enough room for the air to flow through. He's going to check the ALAR rim graft. So on my uh, tip, Dr. Archie, if you'd like to just analyze my tip just here. Obviously it's a very small thing, I don't expect you guys to be able to see it, but do you see there's a big point just here, like quite a sharp point, and then just here is sort of a secondary point. I'll put a picture up so you can see, and I'll just point some arrows toward it so you can see what I'm talking about. But apparently this lump just here is caused by the graft that he put in, the ALAR rim graft, which was to strengthen the nostrils and stop them from collapsing. Apparently that graft, is maybe twisted or maybe it's too sharp. Uh, and because I've got very thin skin, it's actually sticking out through the skin. He said people would have thick skin. So for example, um, like Lebanese people, he said when he operates on the Lebanese noses, they've got quite thick skin. So he can put grafts into their skin and even if they're not the right shape, it doesn't show through because their skin's thicker. But because I've got very, very thin skin, it, any graft that he puts in, shows through the skin. So he said it's probably like a pointy piece of the graft that's just poking through. So he's gonna have to take that graft out, cut it a little bit to make it less pointy and then put it back in. He's also going to check my right side osteotomies. Can you see how there's like a, a lump here? It's a very small lump, but he said he's got to check this because he said that could either be swelling or something could be out of place. So he's gonna check that. And he's also gonna check my turbinates because um, they reduced my turbinates, which are like located in three spots, one, two, three. There's all this massive amount of swelling still in this area that he said shouldn't be there right now. So he's gonna have to check on my turbinates and make sure that that spot is healing. Then, then he said, I might even need a third operation in February next year, 12 full months from the first operation because he said, you, there's some things you just can't do for a full year. You need the nose to heal for a full 12 months before you can operate on some things. But the breathing problems and all that, because it's been over six months now, he said that he, he can go in and fix that. So uh, it's halfway through August now, coming to the end of August. So I'll have all of September. And then on the 6th of October, I will have my second operation. So 2020 did not go as planned. I'm gonna end this video here because this is literally dragged on for six months. You know what? Al, Archie, you are so rude. What are you doing, Al? You're so rude. All I'm gonna say is if you have a friend considering getting a plastic surgery, send them this video first because I feel like a lot of nose job vlogs on YouTube are basically just 
guys, this is my nose before. And then they go, they get the cast taken off, they go, yay, it's so nice, look at my nose, and then it's over. And then everyone thinks that it's all, the cast comes off, happy days. But really, as you've probably witnessed, things were great, and then they got worse, and then they got better, and then they got much, much, much worse. If you have a friend that's like, I don't like my nose, I want to change it, I'm gonna have a nose job, just be like, up, 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 up. Have a look at this video. Look at all the things that went wrong, because I was a very good patient. The doctor told me today, he said, you did nothing wrong. Who could have predicted a pandemic too? You know, like the three month period where I wasn't able to see my doctor and my staph infection happened. That could have also contributed to why the results are ruined. Right now I'm at this point where I'm trying to weigh up in my head, is it really worth me having a second operation? It could get better, yes, but it could also get worse. And I do need to risk it because my breathing is so bad now. My breathing was bad before, right? But I did live with it for 26 years and I was okay. It was bad and I thought I can't put up with this any longer. But now that I've experienced worse breathing, I'm like, I would have just been better off not doing anything. You know, I would have been better off just putting up with the floppy nostrils, putting up with the bump in my nose that you could only see from the side and the only people that cared about it were people on YouTube and obviously I didn't like it from the side, but I don't look at the side of my nose every day. I look at the front of my nose and now, the front of my nose isn't as nice as it was before. I do regret it, I regret the operation. If I come out of this second operation with good breathing and, you know, things looking better from the front, I won't feel so strongly. But right now, as it stands, in August 2020, I really regret it. And I would advise you, if you are considering having an operation like this, that you really think, not just twice about it, think a thousand times over. And even though that's what I did, I did think it through a thousand times over, but even then, even then. But my plan from here is basically resume life for the next month and a bit until the second operation. I don't really have a young, impressionable audience. Like my audience demographics are mostly the age 18 up to 35. I hardly have any young people watching me. But um, if you're, you know, being influenced by me and maybe you've seen this video and you thought to yourself, oh, you know, Alex got a nose job and I've always wanted to get a nose job. Maybe I'll get one too. No, no, Alex is advising you, don't get a nose job. Just be happy with yourself the way you are, you know? Because <laughs> maybe if I'd just gone in for the septoplasty and not tried to change the shape, maybe things wouldn't have gone wrong. Maybe it would have just been an easy operation. They could have fixed the breathing thing, given me the grafts and be done with it. And maybe all these complications wouldn't have arisen. Maybe they would have, there's no way of knowing, but you really have to, anytime you go for any sort of surgery, whether you're thinking of getting your nose done or your boobs done or your butt done or whatever you want to do, you just need to really think it through so heavily and just think to yourself, it's not guaranteed to go well. Thank you to those of you that are still here at the end of this video, because I reckon the amount of people that would have watched it, seen the cast come off and then they probably left. You know, those people obviously don't know what's happened from the point when the cast came off until now. They probably think that the nose I had the day the cast came off is the nose that I still have. Obviously it's not. Do you guys want me to film a video about that second operation? I can if you want to. <laughs> Look, at the end of the day, even if I'm not happy with my nose, Archie's still attracted to me. Not great, because I'm his mother. Before I finish, I may as well show you one last look at the nose to give you, you know, the final update of how it looks. 